Salute, salute, salute. It's your boy Gimmo Kiske, Legion of Knicks, here to talk to you about the rumors surrounding Derrick Rose and how his postseason play may impact how the Knicks move in the offseason. But before we get started, please hit like, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the dark notification bell so you get each and every notification for each and every video I put out there. Let's get started. Now, first and foremost, I got the Zach Wilson headband. Don't hate. That's the Prince of New York, the best quarterback in New York City. I stay because unfortunately, you know. Josh Allen and the Bills. But anyway, let's get to it. Now, Ian Bagley of SNY has just reported that the teams that are out there that are point guard needy believe that the Knicks would have gone into this offseason and spent some money on guys maybe like Kyle Lowry, the Dennis Schroeders, sign and trade possibly for Lonzo Ball. But given Derrick Rose's postseason play, some of those teams are now convinced that the Knicks are going to go into this offseason to re-sign Derrick Rose to a, a, a nice offer sheet and have him in the starting lineup for next season. At 32 years old, Derrick Rose has been nothing but a godsend for the Knicks this season, averaging 14.9 points, 4.2 assists, 2.9 rebounds, 0.9 steals a game, shooting 48.7% from the field, and 41% from three, and 88.3% from the stripe. He garnered enough votes for a third place finish for the sixth man of the year, and would have possibly won it if he started the season with the Knicks. However, in the playoffs through four games, he's been on some Super Saiyan level production, at 22.8 points a game, five assists, four rebounds, shooting 50.7% from the field, 50% from the three-point line. And despite the team playing poorly overall in the playoffs, he's not even close to blame for the team's overall struggles. That goes to guys like Julius Randle who's been doing his old cold force shooting, Reggie Bullock can't hit a shot, and Tom Thibodeau not making adjustments. But that's a discussion for another day. Now, when you look at some of the teams that might need or want Derrick Rose for services, you have to look at some of these playoff bound or playoff hopeful teams like the Lakers, the Heat, possibly, the Raptors, the Jazz, possibly, the Pelicans, uh, the Clippers, and even the Bulls who need a point guard, even though I doubt that Derrick Rose will probably go back to the Bulls at this point. But a lot of these teams have caveats that make it improbable for Derrick Rose to come over in the offseason. We look at the Clippers and their cap situation is pretty bad, especially if they have to give a bigger bag to Kawhi Leonard to stay, which is most likely going to be the situation in the offseason. The Heat might be looking to package some players for a bigger upgrade at the guard position after not being able to trade for James Harden at the trade deadline and having their bubble pop by the Bucks in the playoffs. The Pelicans drafted Carol Lewis and still have Eric Bledsoe to 2023, so they have pieces if they don't resign Lonzo Ball. And they essentially have the ball in Zion Williamson's hands for the most part. He's become their point forward extraordinaire for the team. The Jazz payroll, even without Mike Conley, will take a bump to a projected $130 million as Gobert and Donovan Mitchell's new contracts will take effect this coming offseason. I doubt Conley will command another $30 million plus contract, and he may want to return back to a place of familiarity with Mitchell, Gobert, and Snyder after taking that pay cut. So that leaves the Lakers and the Raptors as the last teams on my list who will be interested in Derrick Rose, and the Lakers probably would be the one that would want his services the most, as according to league executives, the Lakers have been interested in Derrick Rose for the past several seasons, and it was rumored to have tried to trade for Derrick Rose from the Pistons this past train deadline. He does have a relationship with LeBron James, allegedly, and he would be able to take off some pressure from AD. Now, the issue is, would he like to become a shorter for the team? A talented guard who was a bench beast for OKC, but did find ways to play in certain rotations with CP3 and SGA. But in that Lakers system, many times he's seen as a third fiddle alongside LeBron James and AD. And would Derrick Rose be comfortable sitting out on the perimeter, waiting for the ball, having lower usage, and allow AD and LeBron to operate that high pick and roll system, where he basically become their Chris Bosh in a way. Now granted, obviously, uh, Derrick Rose and Chris Bosh are not the same player, but in the sense of he might have diminished some of his own ball skills to allow for the best production from AD and LeBron. Most of Schroeder's stats went down relative to his previous year in OKC. He was primarily a beast off the bench, but found ways to be deadly alongside Chris Paul and SGA. Schroeder's points went down from 18.9 to 15.4 a game. Field goal percentage went down from 47% to 43.7%. Three-point percentage went down from 38.5% to 33.5%. His assists were up from 4 to 5.8 a game in his first season in LA, although he did play with CP3 and SGA in OKC last year. But when LeBron James and AD were down, despite turnover issues, Schroeder averaged 16.9 points a game, 44.8% shooting from the field, 39.4% from the three-point line, 87.3% from the stripe, and 8.2 assists, excelling as a lead guard versus being a talented third wheel when AD and LeBron were healthy. 
But back to Derrick Rose. He would have to endure the headache of having to follow behind LeBron James and AD and the not just the LA, but all of sports media where if LeBron James win, it's because of LeBron James. If the Lakers lose, it's because Derrick Rose, a free agent acquisition, didn't do enough to help LeBron James. And look, Derrick Rose has been through the ringer regarding the highs and lows in the NBA. This is a guy who's had gruesome injuries with the Bulls, got traded to the Knicks under a regime that was, was for lack of better words, uh, dysfunctional at the time with Phil Jackson. Uh, went over to bottom feeding teams like the Cavaliers and the Pistons, but he did enjoy some of his better years, or one of his better years, under Tom Thibodeau playing off the bench uh, with Minnesota, where he did average about 18 points off a 48.2% shooting from the field, 37% from three, 4.3 assists, and this was mostly from the bench. So there seems to be that under Tom Thibodeau, there's a strong sense of chemistry, uh, familiarity, uh, and coaching that provides a safety net for Derrick Rose tactics and instructions that he's used to playing in the triangle being the lead guard in tom thibodeau's system whether it be again the triangle or the horn sets whatever it may be that tom thibodeau's thrown out there it seems that derrick rose feels the most comfortable playing under his uh tutelage and leadership and it seems to be a legit fact as todd gibson stated in a recent post game conference after game two when he was asked for the reason for derrick rose's resurgence in this stint in new york he said one thing about derrick i've noticed when he's in a familiar situation in a situation that he's comfortable in and he understands his family he understands that it's a good environment a winning environment he's going to flourish and right now he's around familiar faces he's been in battle with for a long time it's no coincidence how he's been playing rose himself said i'm a totally different player now i did change my game people have to defend me different they're putting big guys on me and they can't go under the screen anymore just everything I've changed my game now next year the Knicks are expected to have some decent cap space at only 54.8 million being on the books for next year at this point right now obviously there'll be some guys coming off of their one-year deals this season so the Knicks may look to resign so the Knicks should have plenty of money it shouldn't be an issue regarding uh, how much they should be able to give Derrick Rose but you do have guys like Drew Holiday just got a four-year 134 at least 134 million dollars uh, on that contract and obviously Lonzo Ball, Kyle Lowry, uh, and Dennis Schroeder have all intimated or expected to at least receive at the very minimum 20 million per year with Lonzo Ball most likely coming through sign and trade. Kyle Lowry stating that he wanted a 50 million two-year uh, deal and Dennis Schroeder who rejected a four-year deal for about 84 million from the Lakers. The market may be a little bit skewed and when you look at all three they have strength and flaws about them that i will address in another video but it can make you a little bit hesitant to give them decent money for dennis schroeder he's a very talented but very mistake prone guard who may best fit as a bench or ancillary guard versus being a lead guard to carry a team like this but again with Drew's run rj barrett coming into his own as a secondary playmaker would you need dennis schroeder to be that type of guard questions abound Kyle Lowry is a bulldog with championship pedigree who still shot about 39% from three and averaged 17 points, but on a team that didn't make the playoffs despite expectations, he may have seen his best years pass him by at 35 years of age. Is he really worth 25 million plus? And what about Lonzo Ball? This is a guard who's had the basketball taken out of his hands by two coaches despite last year where it seems as Lonzo Ball may have made a breakthrough with that team where they're playing with more pace, they were winning games, and yet the ball's still taken out of his hands. And is he best served as an off guard with a free throw draw rate of only 9%? But he can defend at a high level, is a viable outside shooter at 37.8% from three, and does excel in the pick and roll, which is a staple of Tom Thibodeau's offense. Derrick Rose making about $7.7 million in the final year of this contract. So look for that number to easily double with his next contract. And for the Knicks, if they do re-sign him, to sign him to a two to three year deal to help Tom Thibodeau in his window. As a Knicks, the least of starters at the very least need some consistent guard play, which they didn't get from Alfred Payton. You still need to see what you got in RJ Barrett. You still need to see what you got in Julius Rand before you decide to possibly give him a, a, a max deal, which may not be the case at this playoffs. But again, the Knicks need consistent guard play. And not just those two, but when you take into account his pace, his court vision, his ability to track defenses while still be able to attack the paint, it has helped develop Leon Rose's first ever draft pick in Obi Top and who Leon Rose would definitely want to see be able to succeed in the system so you can say that he was right and give some legitimacy 
to his front office, but Obi Toppin overall does play better when running the floor and attacking north to south with all those passes from Derrick Rose. Emmanuel quickly was established himself even past the pick and rolls and the floaters as a viable catch and shoot specialist, and that ability really comes out when playing alongside Derrick Rose. Todd Gibson, who has an extensive experience and history playing alongside Derrick Rose in Chicago and Minnesota, and when you look at his numbers, he has a plus 9.8 points per 100 possessions when playing alongside Derrick Rose's regular season. And let's not forget guys like Mitchell Robinson, who will at the very least still depend on guard play that can get him the ball in the vertical plane in that pick and roll set and be able to penetrate into the paint to get him those handoffs right at the rim. Going back to consistent point guard play, Rose has been great in both the starting lineup where he has started three games for the New York Knicks this season and off the bench. However, most of his value has been felt mostly in that second lineup. The question now is, do you keep Rose as a starting stop gap point guard for two or three years? Draft a guard like Jared Butler from Baylor, Ayo DeSamo from Illinois, or Trey Mann from Florida with the 19th or the 21st pick, or even a combo guard like Miles McBride in the second as a developmental replacement? Or do you go crazy at the guard position and you pay for Rose to go to the bench and then go for a stop gap starting point guard in Kyle Lowry while having Rose on the bench as an attacking guard who can help develop the youngins and play manageable minutes and still draft a guard or two to develop behind Lowry with Rose as a guide, creating a strong environment to slowly bring around the so-called future franchise point guard along? That might be too much money spent on the guard position. Or do you sign Rose as a bench baron while making the leap to trade and extend a Jalen Brunson from the Mavericks, who might not be as expensive as a Kyle Lowry or Schroeder or even Alonzo Ball? And given the fact the Mavericks may need to re-sign Tim Hardaway Jr. and keep money available for Luka in 2023, they might be okay with letting go of a guy like Jalen Brunson if the price is right. All the while, still having Luka Vadoz as a low-risk, high-reward guard option or possibly a trade piece for a bigger guard with such a cheap, flexible contract. Rose is still a starting point guard in his league, whether you like it or not. The guy does have an injury history, and he is a little bit up there in age, but he can still start on most teams in the NBA. Now, it will come down to how Tom Thibodeau utilizes him alongside guys like R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle. Too many times you've seen the season, our, uh, Julius Randle just staying at the top of the key and operating as if he's just... Chris Webb type point forward. You know, he's not getting his butt on the on the low block as much anymore. He did last year. Um, he's not running the pick and roll uh, with Derrick Rose many times out there. Even though Julius Randle as both the pick and roll man and the pick and roll ball handler has had some decent numbers this season. Unfortunately, just don't run enough. So it's going to come down to how Tom Thibodeau uh, utilizes him. Now, R.J. Barrett is a secondary ball handler on this team, and R.J. Barrett has helped uh, develop his three-point shooting with the helps of Drew Hanlon as well as Tom Thibodeau put him in the corner and so when Derrick Rose gets that dribble drive kick out to RJ Barrett opportunities galore but again it's probably going to come down to how they utilize uh, uh, Derrick Rose and, and, and Julius Randle um, and again look Tom Thibodeau plays a slow pace so that's not an issue Tom Thibodeau's been playing a slow pace for most of his career outside of one or two years I believe with Minnesota uh, with Chicago Derrick Rose dynamic point guard extraordinaire MVP in 2011 slow pace offense under Tom Thibodeau so it's not necessarily a speed thing but it's essentially the plays that can maximize the value of Derrick Rose as a point guard who's not just scoring and slashing but one who's able to facilitate draw the defenses in and get players in the best positions to do their thing on the court personally I would like for the Knicks to inject some youth into the point guard position obviously you're not going to draft a player and have him start right away unless somehow they amazing the offseason but i would definitely like for us to drive some youth into that position have some type of continuation plan for when derrick rose moves on um, we bring that guy along obviously you'd hope that they developed off the bench uh, be able to soak in all the information and guidance from leaders like derrick rose and uh, Julius randall's rj barrett's taj gibson's but uh, it's tough because when you look at Tom Thibodeau's so-called draft his history or the players who have been associated or connected uh, to the teams that he's coached and been drafted during his regimes is not the prettiest. Now, granted, Jimmy Butler is a great example of a player that Tom Thibodeau's drafted and developed. A guy who was a diamond in a rough, rough uh, a guy who came on as a defensive guard and is now one of the better two-way guards in the league. But when you look at his draft history, it's not the prettiest. You're talking about guys like Chris Dunn. You're talking about uh, Kogi's. And, and just to get to the guards, you know, he had Teague in 2012, 
yeah, Chris Dunn 2016 is not the prettiest of sights. And so Tom Thibodeau definitely has to uh, find a way to improve in that, 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 in that, that aspect, bringing on talented guards, be able to develop them because worst case scenario, say, you know, we do sign a Derrick Rose, but we can't make a trade for the so-called guard that we want. You're looking at a draft where you are going to have two first round picks. And so you may need to develop an Io DeSamo or may need to develop a Trey Mann, may need to develop a Jared Butler, even though I think Jared Butler is a little bit more developed than some of the other guys I, I just mentioned playing with Baylor, playing alongside Davion Mitchell. But if that's the, the scenario that uh, comes our way, or even a Miles McBride in the second round, it's up to Tom Thibodeau to develop these guys. And this year, you've seen it with quickly as coming on as a, a solid combo guard for the Knicks. I definitely think that Tom Thibodeau has the uh, ability to do so, but that would definitely be one of the tall tasks that he may be faced with if we're uh, if we come down with the worst case scenario this summer. All in all, Derrick Rose has been great for the Knicks. I think that the Knicks would definitely try to find a way to keep him here. Uh, he's definitely a candidate to be a starting guard given some of the options, free agency options, and some of the training options. We're talking about guys like the Con Sexons or Alonzo Balls or even the Jalen Brunsons. Derrick Rose would definitely be the top of the list for the Knicks. And looking at the postseason play, of Derrick Rose, despite the failures of the Knicks right now, who are down 3-1 against the Atlanta Hawks, I can expect the Knicks to go hard at Derrick Rose to offer him something where they probably double his contract, give him a little bit more on top of that. Derrick Rose will probably be, if he's down for the, the program, he might say, hey, look, the Knicks, you guys are going to have to resign Randall and R.J. Barrett, so I won't throw something crazy at you, given the fact that there is a dearth of talent at the position where you look at the free agent options and the fact that you may have to trade for a so-called high level or star guard this upcoming offseason. So again, Derrick Rose being that he's here with Tom Thibodeau, being a system he trusts, a place that he, I guess, calls a second home, a team that he calls his family, with Taj Gibson and guys that he feels comfortable playing with. I do think the Knicks will definitely throw him something this summer. But guys, let me know what you think. Do you think that Derrick Rose should be the starting guard for the Knicks come next offseason? Should he be the bench Baron to help develop the Obi Toppins, the IQs. How long should we sign him? Two, three years. Uh, how much money do you think we should give him? Should we go out and just trade for Jalen Brunson? Trade for a Colin Sexton, who's a young guard with Cleveland right now, who's kind of embattled with the team. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Hit the likes, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for viewing this. It's your boy Gamo Kiyosuke, Legion of Knicks, and we out. Salute.